Okay, welcome to my site. Uh, the Flat Earth site, Lindsay Harris's Flat Earth site of basically divine knowledge. Stuff you haven't heard of before. It's not, it's not from science and it's not what you've been educated with. It's stuff we've not been told. The secrets of life. The Freemasons and all these guys know about it. But we don't get told about it and I'm here to explain it through all my videos using all what's been what's been left for us from all the cultures all around the world. Uh, you know, Norse, Christian, Egyptian, Germanic, German, whatever. Everything. And it's all about the flat earth model and the human brain in con our conscious state. It's all connected. Flat at the Earth. The Schumann Resonance, 8.7.83. What's the um, resting state of the human brain? 7.83. It's connected. Everything's connected. But I've done some previous videos regarding a matter, a certain time of the year. And uh, I've got to make some corrections on it's, on it's on the layout. But for those who haven't uh, been following me, this is Centre Earth Vortex. We live out here. Everything is projection. Nothing's physical up here. We're not even physical. Everything down here seems physical because of our five senses. But uh, putting that aside, that is our physical world. Up here is not physical. They're all projections from out of here. The centre earth vortex. It all comes from down here around the sun. Which is down there. The elliptic. The ellipse. The planets, the moon, everything. In association with the sun. It's a winding magnetic field. It's a closed system. It's created a voltage which created the sun. Long story. I'm going to check out my other videos, but I'll be doing a video soon and how all this works with the, the induction motor, mag magnetic induction. But, uh, so it's about the magnetic fields, they come up. They don't go all the way from the south to the north or north to the south, south to the north they say. They come to the equator, into the tropic region of the moisture. They come to that point, they both merge at that point, come down to the earth, hit the earth and cross over and come back up. That's how they work. Like this, hit the earth, cross over. That's all described in mechanics. If you're an electrical engineer, you'll understand how it goes from positive to negative in the, um, the circuitry, the uh, like three phase system or something. It diverts the electrons, they'll go off in the opposite and go back up here. This is the positive, the negative. Now when they say it's positive, it's negative. So in a magnet, a ring magnet, well I've done all that before so I won't go there. Um, little correction, see I had this, had this picture that where the magnetic fields flow back down through the equator. But that diagram would only refer from this direction, if you had the centre vortex behind it, that would be looking that way. Because this, this is the flat earth looking down on it, and put a slice through the middle, they were looking through, looking through from that elevation. So there it is there, right? So the centre arctic circle there, centre arctic. Got this invisible vortex. If you go up 3,000 kilometres, you'll start getting into it probably, or you know, less than that. But we can't see it down here. Um, <clears throat> so basically the magnetic fields are doing this, north and south. They wind back down through the earth. But from this elevation, we'll come up and go down. It'll go away, down to the earth, and loop, shoot back up through the guts. So it does a nice flow like this. If you can imagine it, down, because it's always flowing up on these angles. 
goes up, down, and then back around up to the center and out again to come back over and do its course. Out of the center, come up on an angle, slow down, straight up again. That's what it's doing. So that is going on, and the Egyptians show all that. Uh, okay, so look that out of the way. Uh, scale was wrong. I said the scale, I scaled it, but I hadn't scaled it properly. Because I only had 12,000 k's here. And it's 10,000 k's from the equator. And I had 12 in total here. But it was a good diagram anyway. <laughs> uh, and I, all my previous videos I've been saying first kingdom, no, first kingdom, second kingdom. I've now learnt that the kingdoms is here, are here. This is first kingdom. Where creation began, and as earth grew out from the centre, second kingdom came along. Because this is similar to this. It, it, but it's sort of out in our realm. Because this is unseen in that. We don't really see much of this going on here, but we know the tropics are there. Dry atmosphere, thick atmosphere. This is the attraction somehow. It hits this and then comes down. So this is like, I'm calling the ether. It's the attraction to these fields. It brings the field down and then they shoot off up here. So that's first kingdom, second kingdom. Because this is basically going like that, isn't it? And this is going like this. Divergence, convergence. Um, and this, where we live in here, is a dielectric with inside the magnetic field. And known in Norse and Germanic mythological tales as Midgard, Middle Earth. Midgard, where we dwell, all in here, inside here, where the waters are separated. This field here, the magnetic field that comes through the earth. See that field comes down and goes straight up through there. It goes down through there. No, they don't touch each other. It's just a, an elevation. They're 120 degrees apart. Electrical engineers will know that, how it all works. They have, a, they have a system, mathematical equation, don't they? 120 times frequency over, over P, which is um, poles. Poles in this whole system would be the would be the um, electrons inside the elliptic. But we'll, we'll get into that later. We'll do another video on that later. Um, right. And I'll let you in on some secrets, eh? Give you a couple straight away. I've got my ruler in here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you saw my egg uh, video a while back. Now this all stems from, um, I've gone deep, I've spent a, lot, a few days going right into all this and it's all connected so it's really hard to get out in a video without wandering off track because everything's connected. I've just got to work my way through it and hope you're following me. But uh, there's a divine moment in history in our, in our, during the year but it might not happen every year, but it's September when the moon goes closest to the sun, where our elliptic ellipse is not on the 23.5 degrees, it's leveled out, it's equilibrium, that's the equinox, right? And if you can imagine the sun, because the sun's like an egg, it's, there's the sun there. It's this elliptic shape as it, when it's stretched out more longitudinal but as it comes up it becomes more circular and the, uh, let's 
not even go there. It's going to get drawn out. Well, anyway, when this, when this moment, when this, at the um, equinox, September, the, the magnetic field changes. The moon going in close like that changes. It's when the, we get those big variances in tides. The tide goes right out and back in for three days. Santos did a quick video on that and showed it where it was in Mexico. The tide goes straight out and he didn't know what it was. He was going to look into it. But anyway, this is what it is. It's an equinox and this magnetic field alters the field out here. And it, it parts because between the southern magnetic rotate, um, octantus rotation, sky rotant, rotation, and the Polaris rotation, there's a gap. Science won't tell you that because you're supposed to live on a rolling ball, so it's all just one big rolling sky, but there's not. It's, it's flat and there's two rotations, and there's a gap there. At this particular time, that gap parts just a little bit more. And this is what all the mythology and all the religions all talk about. It's this divine moment. It's where Hermes comes about. Thoth. Hermes Thoth. And it's to do with the um, uh, Venus and Mercury. Venus and Mercury, each side of the sun. Probably lost you already. But it's about... Hermes and Thoth, they come back from Mercury going retrograde into the sun. All planets go into the sun. When they go retrograde, they're going into the sun and out again. It appears in the sky to look as though it's going retrograde, going backwards, but it's just, it's just the sun passing it and the angle we see it. When the, when the sun passes it again, it looks like it's going the opposite direction. But I'll get into that in a further video as well. But um, anyway... This moment in time, what am I getting at? Okay, this leads me into the solar eclipses, because it's all about that. And I've now discovered there is a third entity when it comes to solar eclipses. I know I've done a video on solar eclipses, but it's not 100% right. There's a third entity, and it's to do with the vacuum. The vacuum is black. It's the ham. Ham, black. It's ham in the Bible, Noah. This is about the two suns that covered him. This is to do with the, the moon going into the sun at new moon. If the sun goes into the moon, the moon goes into the sun every month at new moon and sits with the sun for 2.2 days. But it on a particular time, and this, you know, particular time at new moon, there will be a solar eclipse, and this has to do with the black. The black was inside the vortex. It somehow comes over the sun, or well, the sun moves into it. But I'm still looking into that. But but it's it's. It's everywhere I look, and if you if you start breaking down all the words and even that Noah story, we've got Japheth, the location of the parting sky. That's here. We've Ham, the black came out of dark place. Black Ham is the black, and that's the Christian story of the Israelis coming out of a dark place, coming out of Egypt. It's it's all allegory. It's not a true story that. Israel has nothing to do with life, okay? Israel is Isis, the sky, the sun, and Elohim, the other planet, or whatever's going on. So you've got coming out of a dark, Ham is the dark, associated with the um, eclipses, okay? Solar eclipses, Egypt, land of Ham, burnt, because Egypt's known as a burnt, the land, the black land, black, and that science put it down to flipping. <laughs> You know, history puts down the black soil, but, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, offering, also servant majesty, because from this event comes Hermes, or Thoth, messenger of the gods. The man, man's awakening at this point. Um, that time and that place, Japheth, with a solar eclipse, Ham, 
the person by name, chosen one called by his name is Shem, knowledge of the whole creation, etymology, name of renown, Canaan, the people who came through, those were the people too, people who come out of it. What am I getting at? But the Noah story, I could read you a little bit. These are the sons of Noah. And of them was the whole earth spread. And Noah began to be a husbandman. And he planted a vineyard. That's Noah being a husbandman. That's the sun getting on with the moon. Um, that's the moon getting off the sun. Well, Noah being the sun. And uh, he's given her a bit, so he calls it planting a vineyard. Uh, vineyard, okay. And he drank of the wine, you know, he's obviously enjoying it, and was drunken. And he was uncovered within his tent. Okay. Exposed. And Ham, the father of Canaan, Ham, the dark, the dark place, father of Canaan, that place, Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. These are, I'm putting down the Mercury and Venus, there's a connection there. And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders, covered both the moon and the sun, that's the blackness, and went backwards. This is retro, when retrograde, so it's to do with Mercury and Venus, they do their retrograde, it's referring to that, went backwards, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And it goes on and on and on. It's pretty, pretty out there. Anyway, it's to do with the um, solar eclipses. And there's a third entity. I'm going to look into it. But we know in a vacuum, science knows, it's black. It's a black hole. It's the, it's the science black hole. It's the same thing. When you get on YouTube and watch these science sites, they're talking about black hole. They're describing the whole thing here. Then you've got pictures of the sun and what it looks like. The, spark, the voltage off the side of it. It's all there. So, we do now. Ah, this was getting at the magic. So I was looking at those solar eclipses and stuff and realizing, you know, at the, uh, I'm holding my ruler like this and thinking, how's it working then? Next thing, what pops into my head? At that point, I don't know if you've heard about it, but the Egyptian story is, uh, what's his name? Is it the dog head? Abyss, which is, what, the scales. You're measured at death to test the scales. Well, it's not what you're being taught, of course. I'm telling you what the, the true story is. There's the scales, the Egyptian scales. The, the sun at equilibrium has moved into the center of the, the vacuum at the solar eclipse. And this is the divine moment, the weighing up. This is the uh, perihelium and epihelium, the two themes on Jesus, each side of Jesus. It all comes about from that. And this is the scale story being weighed. In other words, it's in the middle there. But it's also connected with the, you know, your spiritual side as well. But that's, that's the guts. It's, it's at equinox in September. And the sun comes into the center. And it, something causes the um, eclipse to pass over the sun. I haven't quite got there yet. I'm getting there. But there is a third entity, and we've known, a lot of cops have known that, they call it Ka, I think, I can't remember. But I'll get there. So, what we have, see what we have in here is this elliptic, ellipse. It's like this. You've got the magnetic field, the electrical field where the sun is, and then you've got this magnetic field out here. So in here we have this belt. 
I'm calling the ring of fire. Not the ring of fire around a solar eclipse. I'm calling it the ring of fire. Because it's around the sun. You've got a magnetic field out here, electrical field. And what, are the, what do we know about Venus? It, they spin the opposite direction because this spin in here is opposite to this outer spin. Everything rotates one way in the whole vortex. Except down there, it's the reverse spin. Straight down. Venus is there, on just on the inside track. That's what's known to be turning the other way, but in this way. And it's like a little sun, isn't it? It's like a little sun. And, but then we have Mercury, it's supposed to be closer. But Mercury's out here, in the magnetic field. Now, Venus is also known as that was uh, the Romans, Venus, it was the Greeks, was it? Or vice versa? Called it Aphrodite, or Aphrodite. Aphrodite, and what does Aphrodite lead to? Hermaphrodite. Because she's on the cusp of the electrical, which is the male, and the magnetic, which is the female, the electron side. So she's sitting there. But we have, we have Mercury back in here that looks like a moon, don't we? Because it's in the female magnetic side. Now there's a connection between these two. It's like male and female. It's the duality in the whole religious story. Um, there's a lot to it, eh? But anyway, that's connected to the, the solar eclipses. Solar eclipses, not... There's more going on. Things happen. All the other planets, like it's like a watch. Everything works together to make things happen. So that's pretty basic, you know. And they say uh, um, it's covered in cloud. Venus is covered in cloud. Well, we're seeing, we're looking through all this, aren't we? You know, and you're on this zone between the magnetic field and the electrical field. So the smoke, I don't know, probably from the from the blackness in here. It's more pale or white on the verge here, I don't know. But uh, you don't get that on uh, Mercury that's sitting out here in the magnetic field, do you? No. So there's no there's no real retrograde, it's just the motion, the way it looks, because this sun's going around every day. And the planets are slower, right? It's just the way it works. See, they're the same pace as the sun. Virtually, nearly. That's why they hang out there next to the sun. And then when they do get to pass, we don't get to see it because it's gone over the horizon. It's just the way it works. We don't. We only see it just as it's going over at night or coming up in the morning. Uh, yeah. So all planets go into the sun when they do their cycle. They, they loop into the sun and out again. And science has the flipping... You know, Venus sort of doing, coming around and going something like this behind it, or coming around in there. What the hell is it going in there? Nothing goes in there, it'll fall back down through the hole. Everything gets recycled, destroyed down through there. Everything is coming into the sun like this, and then comes out again. And because the sun's moving quicker than these bodies, it looks like this is going backwards when it goes like this. That's your retrograde. Scientists, the spinning ball is just garbage. It's just all made up rubbish. It's so simple when you start understanding the flat earth. Uh, it's back to the Cain and Abel thing. Uh, not, I mean Shem and Ham. Noah went backwards. See, these are the two... Look, they look facing backwards. Open nakedness. Naked. It opens up. This field in here opens up. This is the crossing of the Red Sea. The whole story opens and then closes. Opens and closes. It's only three days long, I think. Because this is the, these are the two skies. There's the rotation out here. The southern rotation. 
in the, in the big rotation in here. But this is the same size as that, should be right out here. This, this actually rotates right around the world 24 hours, but we don't know. Science doesn't know. Sigma Octantis is always there. And when you work, where you are out south, it always appears to be there. There's always a rotation from between you and the south. You'll see that in other videos. Okay, you got there, that's pretty basic. Magnetic field out here, electrical field in there. This big vortex. This is basically just a state of inertia here, just the magnetic field, just it's just constant. Um, Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, invisible, you know, he was talking about this, invisible, Middle Earth, Midgard. Or Germanic, Germ Germanic, or Norse script. He didn't really write it. He does not denies not making it up. But it's all even the words he used. It all breaks down to the same mythological story as all the other creation stories. Gilgamesh, even Enoch, um, King Arthur, or any of those. It's just another allegory to the this divine moment in time. That's what's all left for us. But it's all, it's a secret. You have to find it. Search and you shall find. And that's what I'm trying to do with all my videos, explain how it all is, so you all understand. We live in a divine realm. It's all energy. We don't live on a spinning ball going nowhere for no good reason. It's all connected to the human spirit. Once you realize that nothing's physical, everything is resonating frequency held together with the resonating frequencies coming 